on the side of the room. Please be sure to sign in for our records so that if necessary, we can contact you in the future regarding the item you are here for. Today's hearing, we have three order in the agenda. Order number 201754, order number 201708, order number 201770. My job as the hearing officer is to gather the facts for the hearings and listen to your testimony and help our directors of public works make determination on today's hearing item. I will not be making any decision today. Instead, I will forward the findings from this hearing and recommend the, the, the decision to the directors. The director will make the final determination. When the director's determinations are made, the department will notify you of them. Therefore, if you want to be notified, again, please sign in the attendance sheet on the, side, on the right side of the uh, room. This is how the uh, hearing will proceed. I will ask the department to make a brief presentation and will have up to five minutes to present the item. On the case where determined is denied the application, will I have the applicant speak next? Then I will follow the department to speak and to address any concern. On the case where the department approved the application and received protest, I will have the protest speak next, and then the applicant. Then I will have the department to speak again to address any concern. In some cases, there are mixed appeal, meaning the department approves some removal and deny others. For these cases with mixed appeal, I will have the protest speak first, the department, and then the applicant. Comments should be addressed to me and not the department. If you cannot finish your comment within the allotted time, you could submit written testimony to me by the end of the hearing. The clerk will monitor the time of all speakers. When you hear the first bell, it means the speaker will have 30 seconds left to speak. A louder second bell will signal that the time is up. If you are speaking in general about all of the permits, I will ask that you only speak once and not to each permit application. All public comments are completed, then I will close the item. So we will now begin the hearing for order number 201754. Order number 201754 is to consider the validity of notices to repair that have been issued to various property owners and utility agency for the restorations of public right-of-way sidewalk on blocks in the outer Richmond district neighborhood bordered by Balboa Street on the north 44th Avenue on the east, Fulton Street on the south, and Great Highway on the west. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Seamus McCullough. I'm a street inspector with Public Works uh, inside the uh, Sidewalk Inspection Repair Program. Public Works Code Section 706 states that it shall be the duty of the property owners to maintain sidewalk and sidewalk area fronting or adjacent to their property in good repair and condition. That said, this public hearing is to consider the validity of notices to repair that have been issued to various property owners and utility agencies for the restoration of public right-of-way sidewalks. The Sidewalk Inspection Repair program was enacted by the city in 2007 to improve the pedestrian path to travel by inspecting and notifying property owners of defects requiring repair. Under city and state codes, property owners are responsible to maintain the sidewalks fronting their properties. This program differs from past inspection programs by providing funding for the city to allow property owners the option to have the city repair the sidewalks for them and to invoice them upon completion of work. Part of the CERT process is to hold public hearings for property owners to express their concerns as to the validity of the re required re sidewalk repairs. 
Since its inception, the uh, SERP has conducted inspections along 1,812 blocks in neighborhoods throughout the city. Today's hearing is for property owners who have received sidewalk repair notifications in the SERP 146 Outer Richmond District, neighborhood bordered by Balboa, ba Balboa Street on the north, 44th Avenue on the east, Fulton Street on the south, and Great Highway on the west. Letters for this area were mailed out on August 20th, 2019. So do we have any, sure, you can come up. Can you come up to the podium and address yourself? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I took pictures name, of please. the side. Hello? Name? My name is James Stockford. I live in the outer Richmond, 6924 Fulton Street. I took photos and I have questions. There's two squares in front of our house that have white dots on them. And in the squares, on the edges, there are some circles. Mm -hmm. I have really two basic questions. What materials can we use to fill the circled spots? Can we use a resin like epoxy? Or must we use a certain kind of concrete? Will any outdoor suitable concrete work? Must we add lamp black? Sure, I'll have the city uh, address that issue. Okay. Uh, then the other is there are some other marks on our property, uh, unmarked blemishes on the sidewalk one that seems to be dug up, a little bit of dirt from here, and the other, really more damage than what was circled, but not indicated. Should we fill these? Uh, do we take a risk uh, uh, of filling them and then having them rejected? Those are my questions. Okay. I think the city, I mean, cases that it, you're concerned the city might go back there and take a look again. But meanwhile, I think the city can address some of those issues, like what the white color circle is and what material to use. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. The city will can, can address that, you know, your concern. Well, you're looking over at this fellow here? Yes. So I could ask him the questions no, or show he, him the pictures? No, no, he'll address the concern. Oh, you want to address it now? Or? Yeah, I, I sure. Sure, you give us some ideas what a white circle is, different color means. So the, uh, the white dots in the mm -hmm. sidewalk flag uh, just indicate that that flag needs repair. The uh, circles uh, that he refers to The white dots indicate that that square needs repair. The circles simply indicate the defect that needs repair specifically. Um, th these could be repaired with many types of patch. Uh, could be epoxy based, could be simple concrete patch. No lamp back is needed. Just needs to be uh, made smooth and the hazard needs to be, be abated. Um, So the white circle have the dot. They just patch that portion, or do they have to replace the whole flag? So I believe that, um, I don't know if, who the inspector was for this uh, particular property, but that looks like a patchable defect that would be acceptable to close the notice. Um, these other issues, such as this, this picture provided here, um, the defects don't fall under our criteria for marking. We look for half inch holes or cracks, 
half inch um, in width or depth. This is some hairline cracking. Um, the property owner could could repair these on his own if he wishes, but I don't believe there would be any action taken from our program. Not sure I understand the question. Uh, what we have is a square of concrete, and we have a little hole, something like three inches in diameter. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's circular. Uh, if we patch it, must we dig down, ex excavate three and a half inches below the surface so that we're filling the dirt, or will it uh, less than the three inch effects? Yeah, you, you, you will not have to um, dig down further. Just a sufficient cleaning, maybe a wire brush or even a paintbrush to get any debris out of there or any weeds that are growing, just so the, uh, the patch can adhere better. So we want the patch to adhere to the, to the uh, rim of the concrete? Correct. Thank you. And if, if you'd like, I can provide you with some guidelines to sidewalk repair, um, if you have an email address or I could even mail them to you. I do. Okay. I can come over and have, have you write it down. Yeah. So question, does the city go back and inspect their work after that? Correct, sometime after this hearing, we'll be coming out doing our second inspections okay. to review any work that has been done um, and also to make markings to indicate to our contractor um, what repairs need to be actually okay. made by our contractor. That, that hasn't been scheduled at this time, but it's in, gonna be in the coming weeks. Okay. So, anybody else wanna speak on this agenda in regards to sidewalk repair? If there is none, I'm gonna move on to the second agenda which is order number 201708, to consider the intention of San Francisco Public Works to issue permits for clear channel outdoor to install SFMTA transit shelter kiosk at the following location. Application 19TS0002, transit shelter, 2299 Lombard Street at Pierce Street. 19TS0005, Transit Shelter, 1602 Lombard Street at Gulf Street. Application 19TS0019, Transit Shelter, 6th Avenue and Irving Street. Application 19TS0022, Transit Shelter, Hyde Street and California Street. Application 19TS, 0026 Transit Shelter, Knight Avenue and Irving Street. Let's have the application 19TS002 Transit Shelter, 2299 Lombard Street at Pierce Street. Good morning. My name is Teresa Mielbauer and I'm with Public Works uh, Bureau of Street Use and Mapping. Clear Channel Outdoor, in, conjun in conjunction with the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency, submitted five applications to install new transit shelters. A transit shelter is a structure for use by transit passengers of the SFMTA that may or may not display advertising. Public Works Order 177159 establishes regulations for issuing permits to install transit shelters and kiosks in the public right away. Clear Channel is proposing to install a transit, shel transit shelters at the following locations. 2299 Lombard, 1602 Lombard, 6th and Irving, Hyde in California, 9th and Irving. Public Works has reviewed the applications per Departmental Order 177159 and determined that it complies with the guidelines set forth. Notification was sent and posted. SFMTA, Clear Channel, and the Department of Public Works have, has received two protests, one for 299 Lombard and one for 1602 Lombard. 
The protester for 2299 Lombard and the SFMTA have been working together to resolve the issue. And at this time, um, no further contact has been made at this, um, for this site. Um, the protester for 1602 Lombard is actually here today um, to make a public comment. Um, she will also submit any um, writing protest that she has t to me, and I will forward to the hearing officer. Um, and the Clear Channel and SFMTA are still currently working with the protesters to resolve the issues. I'm here for any questions you may have, and let me show you the photo sims and the, um, the site plans. So this is for 2299 Lombard. So this is what it looks like from the front, and then we are looking at it from the side, and then we are looking from it from the other side. Um, and then... So the 2299 Lombard is the restaurant you're talking about? It's no longer an IHOP. It's now it's ch being changed for a different commercial usage, and I believe that was the original reason for the protest on this one. Um, but they have since um, stopped contacting the MTA and Clear Channel. So if we get further notice from them that they're interested in further protesting it, we will forward it on to you. Okay. Um, this is the site plan. So this site plan complies with all the requirements um, as designated by the order. Um, so that's the site plan for Lomb 2299 Lombard. And then we have the 1602 Lombard. Here is the photo simulations. So that's from the front. This is from the side. And this is from the other side. And right here, they're going to put in a bulb out, um, which just means the SFMTA is extending the sidewalk. They do have sidewalk legislation on file for this one. Um, this is the site plan, which again is in accordance with the DPW order for the requirements for the specifications of the site. Um, the next one is uh, 6th and Irving, and this is the photo sim. So that's from the front. They already have extended the sidewalk in this location, um, but they did have sidewalk le legislation for that when it initially was extended. This is from the side, and that's from the other side. Um, this is the site plan. And again, this is in accordance with the DPW requirements um, in terms of placement. All this is available on the um, your the hearing drive as well, and then this one is for Hyde in California. This is from the side. Or that's from the front. This is from the side, and this is from the other side. And here's the site plan. Again, in accordance with the DPW order. And then the final one is for 9th and Irving. And that's from the front side, other side. And finally, this is the site plan for this location. Again, in accordance with the DPW order. If members of the public are um, interested in more information, they can feel free to contact me at any time. I'll be around after the meeting. I'm happy to give out my information. All right, there we go. Is there any uh, protests regards to any of this location? Okay, sure. Thank you for the opportunity to address this issue. We have a um, couple specific 
issues that we have but that is specific to our property and also some general comments on the bus shelter. So I'll be brief on these points because I know we have limited time. Um, regarding the bus shelter, it will, our building, um, we are members of a Can you LLC. address uh, your name and location? My name is Hannah Leung and this is Lydia Fong. I am Lydia Fong. We are members of uh, Trio Capital, uh, which is the actual owner of the property located at 1600 Lombard Street. Um, the building consists of four residential units upstairs and there's two commercial spaces. The two commercial spaces is, are facing Lombard Street and we're at the corner. Our building actually has both address uh, for Lombard Street and also for Gulf Street. Um, right now you ha we have the um, nine feet existing sidewalk uh, with the entrance for the residential unit and the two commercial storefront. Um, and they are used constantly, obviously. Um, with the bus shelter, we'll be blocking the entrance to the commercial unit located at 1600 completely. And we are in the process of uh, attempting to rent out these units and we are having problems because um, tenants knowing the potential of having a bus shelter in front, um, they basically pull out and want to see what's going to happen. And, and I will be addressing some of the comments on the bus shelters. So there is no visibility for the commercial units on Lombard Street, and which is very uh, needed because um, this lack of pedestrian walks and really a motorist driving across Lombard, which, and, and all the merchants on Lombard Street are suffering because of that. Um, and there are, we have walked the entire Lombard Street and we, we think there are better locations if we like to have bus shelters, there are better locations for the bus shelters along Lombard Street um, where there are no commercial storefronts to block. Um, there are Laguna, Lombard, or um, even at uh, Golf and Lombard at the south side. So um, that's the main point regarding our building. But we also think that it is, um, has negative impact on the public safety in the area. There are a lot of motels uh, located along Lombard Street, and it's already generating a lot of, um, we think is unwanted and illegal activities. And the bus shelter, I think, will contribute to the, uh, uh, to the already uncontrollable problems that we have, and it attracting um, unwanted traffic and loitering in the area. Um, and I think the bus shelter also create nuisance and affect businesses in the neighborhood. Um, it will, probably will become a shelter for the homeless and a place for people to loiter. They may, the criminal activities may go up, and I think the cost to the city is a lot higher to control these activities rather than right now taking uh, what seems to be a good deal is clear channel, putting in the bus shelter and supposedly maintaining it. Um, and also for motorists traveling on Lombard Street, they uh, usually would have large, and this is the purpose, I mean, they do it for gain. I mean, it's not uh, out of goodness of the heart. They will be advertising on it, and they become attractive nuisance for motorists driving along Lombard Street. People will be looking, there'll be lights, or there'll be interesting pictures or advertising, and I think that will also cause um, accidents and, and, and motorist accidents. Um, so, so in general, I just think that it may cost them, the city nothing right now to have these bus shelters, but it will be a cost in the long term to the city in many other ways. And I have personal experience of a bus shelter recently put in, and in a nice neighborhood in Laurel Village, right in front of Starbucks Coffee. Within weeks, the entire large, uh, big sidewalk that it put in become more grounds for people to vomit when they get drunk at night and spills on the streets. Um, it contribute nothing really to the neighborhood uh, except just nuisance. So that's um, our position. And if you have further questions on um, other sites that we may feel is better, um, so we may have more information. Okay, thank you. Any questions? No? Uh, we also have some picture uh, of the building. And so the yellow shade is the bus shelter. How it's going to look like? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So I have this picture taken and uh, uh, have the yellow shaded area where the bus shelter, the size of the bus shelter, how it will block our commercial space. We have a two commercial space on that uh, area. We do the measurement ourselves. The first page is a picture of it. The second p uh, page is the real measurement or the size of the shelter that we, based on the city uh, provided uh, plan. So um, make it to this picture. So take a look, please. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The city want to address this? Sure. Uh, good morning, Gail Stein from the MTA. Um, uh, I am not the project manager for Lombard Street, the, uh, but uh, she was not able to make it. But the Lombard Street project is actually a Vision Zero project, which is part of the MTA's um, goal of reducing pest pedestrian deaths in the city to zero. Uh, the idea is to build bus bulbs. Uh, where there would be sh additional shelters. So the shelters would not be right in front of a business. They would be on a bulb. There would be plenty of clearance. Um, shelters, as I think most people know, are critical for some of our residents for them to be able to access transit. There are people who cannot stand and wait for the bus. Also, we provide a next muni sign which uh, people really like. And as in the case of California and Laurel and California Spruce, with which um, those customers referred to, we actually received many, many complaints <laughs> uh, during the time when we were trying to bring power there. People like the shelters. People like the next muni information. Um, you know, as, as always, we are very willing to have a discussion with people about um, where we might place the shelter and what the alternatives are. This was actually the first time that we have heard exactly what the issues were at this location. We have asked, but we haven't gotten any input. We are very willing to talk to them. Uh, I am fine with putting this one off for the next hearing that we have so that we can have a discussion. Um, but this is, a, you know, this is a very important project for the city. Uh, if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Well, I think it sounds like the city is going to work with the owner and have further discussions of, you know, so we'll post on it to, for the next shelter. Yeah. Uh, okay. we, we are happy to discuss it now that we have a sense of, of what the issues are. Okay. So um, perhaps the city can coordinate with the owner mm -hmm. and for date and time, whichever, whoever is available, and coordinate yes. on that. Yeah? Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So any other protests in regards to a bus shelter in these other locations? So I just want to, uh, so that means six and Irving, Hyde and California, nine and Irving, there is no protest at this time. 1602 Lombard will be moved to a next hearing. 2299 Lombard Street, is it going to be a further discussion? Gail Stein again. Actually, we have had a discussion with the business owner there, and we have come to an agreement um, on, on using a slightly smaller shelter there and, in, and you know, in, in placement within the with bus bulb. Yes. Uh, we we met with them at the location, and we are in agreement, so I, I do not believe they are protesting any longer. Okay, because I believe we have three different models of shelters in this. More than that, actually. Okay, okay. Yes. all right, then you guys can uh, talk about it. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, okay, now since this agenda is closed and no other protests, I believe we're going to move on to the next agenda item for today. Order number 201770. San Francisco Public Works will conduct a public hearing to adopt regulation implementation, the requirements of Article 25 of the Public Work Code. This regulation will revise the supersede DPW order number 184504. A copy of the proposed regulation to be considered at the hearing and can be attained on Public Works at the address set forth. The address will be at Bureau Street and Mapping. Clint, do you have uh, the order number for this? I 
So, um, can I hear from the public? Uh, are you guys on order number 201770? Let's hear from the public and see. Did you want to hear from Public Works first? Oh, so you represent yes. Public Works. Okay. Can you address your name? <clears throat> uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Leo and I'm from uh, Public Works Bureau of Street Use and Mapping. Uh, we called the hearing today to discuss approving a revised personal wireless service facility order. Uh, to give some context on the changes of the order, uh, the Federal Communication Commissions have made legislative changes to wireless facilities. One of the changes imposes a 60-day shot clock for existing structures, which means the city has 60 days to make a determination on the uh, wireless application. Uh, the Board of Supervisors recently adopted amendments to Article 25 of uh, Public Works Code to accommodate those changes. Uh, the ordinance was approved on 8-9-2019. Um, uh, so we are making revisions to the current Public Works Order, uh, 184504, to accommodate the amendments to Article 25. Um, the principal changes to, Article to the order include um, Permitting of wireless equipment of PUC and MTA poles will cease. Uh, if an applicant wishes to add a wireless facility to a PUC or MTA pole, they will need to follow the corresponding pole owner's procedures. Application requirements for pg and &E poles through Public Works will remain constant for the most part. Public Works will make a determination within 60 days from a complete application which is subject to trolling. Shortened review time for agencies. Um, but they are still subject to a proper review for determination of the tier compatibility standards and the public health compliance standards. Uh, the referrals to planning and uh, rec and park for compatibility will be ongoing until we can enact um, an objective design standard. Uh, because the amendments doesn't require tentative approvals and associated public notice, we will increase the posting and mailing requirements for final determination. Instead of notifying any person owning property or residing within 150 feet of the proposed location, applicants will notify any person owning property within 300 feet and any person who is a tenant in any residential property within 300 feet of the proposed pole location. Also, instead of notifying neighborhood groups within 300 feet of the proposed location, um, applicants will need to notify neighborhood groups within 600 feet of the proposed location of the facility. Applicants will also increase their posting notice from uh, they're posting of the notice from two to four locations. The public will still have the option to appeal the permit. Applicants will also have the option to pay the in-lieu tree fee. Uh, due to those amendments, Public Works will be able to shorten the wireless permitting process as we are confined within federal law. Uh, these amendments contained in this new order are intended to incorporate all the changes made to Article 25. Again, the purpose of the order is to implement the approved ordinance and modifications are limited. Uh, we have copies of the order. I'll be here if you have any questions. Thank you. Does any other public want to address the issues of this new reg? My name is, <clears throat> excuse me, my name is Catherine Dodd. I live at 963 Duncan Street, San Francisco. I've lived there for over 30 years. I'm here to oppose the revisions to the order. I'm surprised that the Department of Public Works, of Public Works, that means you're responsible to the public, and the Board of Supervisors is rushing to implement guidelines issued by a captured FCC, meaning that the agency is made up of appointees of the industry it regulates, or the fox guard in the chicken house. We, we should have learned from lead, which we knew for 50 years before we banned it, and we're still cleaning it up. We should have known about child, from childhood, 
childhood obesity that sugary beverages were dangerous. We should have learned that lung cancer caused by the misleading tobacco industry should have been banned earlier on. And the Board of Supervisors bravely took on electronic cig cigarettes. I could go on. This is a public health issue. It takes 20 years to develop tumors in some instances. Leaving, I, I, I'm primarily concerned with leaving only, quote, utility poles in the public right of way. We don't have control over utility poles. The utilities do. We, we do have control, or are theoretically planning and public works in the Board of Supervisors has control over the uh, transit poles and the streetlight poles. You're responsible for keeping us safe and healthy. Um, this limits the Board of Supervisors and public control over that public right of way. I also object to the definition of persons. I would think it seems to be written by Citizens United, given that you're calling a corporation, a partnership, a stock um, company, a person. Will they have First Amendment rights as well? Um, this is, a, as I said, a public works department. Uh, you're turning over your responsibility to make sure we're safe to the telecom industry, AKA the persons. Um, what, who's making up these objective standards and who determines what aesthetics means? Uh, will you take into account that property values will go down as the National Board of Realtors has said whenever you put in 5G, excuse me, personal wireless um, facilities, whenever you put those in, property values go down? Um, who will determine the compatibility standards? I disagree with shortening the time for reviews. They're, go they're going to attempt to put in over 800 of these in the next year. And you're prioritizing telecoms, money-making ventures over the work of the Department of Public Works and the work of the Rec and Park and the work of the Department of Public Health. Do not shorten those review periods and prioritize telecom. Um, and then I object to uh, the the notice, deletion of the notice section. As many people as possible should be notified because their health will be in danger and it will be on the Department of Public Works and the Board of Supervisors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, anybody else? <clears throat> Good morning. My name is uh, Daniel Kreps. I'm here with my wife, Nancy Starr. We reside at 2035 Laguna Street in San Francisco. I'm here primarily today by, by accident. Um, I heard late last night by email that this meeting was being held, that this changes were being pr uh, proposed. I haven't even had a chance to, to read them. So we are quite upset and outraged that Leo, who knows us well, didn't bother to tell us about this change. We've had no chance. Nor, I, th I think, if, if it had been properly uh, notified, that uh, there'd be a lot more people here protesting. And so I think the, the um, notification for this meeting um, has been inadequate. And in the interest of fair and open and transparent governance, we demand consideration of the proposed changes and two regulations implementing requirements of Article 25 be postponed until such time as proper notice can be given to all citizens with a compelling interest in the proposed changes. I mean, as, a, as a matter of record, I'm due to be here one week from today in this very room uh, for a hearing on my appeal. And you would have thought that I would have had an interest in uh, knowing about these changes, and I was not notified. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, good morning. My name is Frances Steppendahl. I reside at number eight Grattan Street. And um, I've already had an appeal in front of the Board of Appeals regarding a uh, utility poll in front of uh, 2 Grattan Street. I'm here today because I have read through the proposed changes and I have a comment about just part of this section. Uh, could I use the overhead?
I just want to uh, point out that uh, one of the uh, sections, um, page uh, nine, talks about uh, public right of way that the general plan is designated as being most significant to city pattern defining city form or having an important street view for orientation. The applicable standard is whether a proposed personal wireless facility would significantly de degrade or detract from the aesthetic attributes that were the basis for the designation of the street for special protection under the general plan. For a public wide array that the general plan has designated as having views that are related excellent or good, the applicable standard is whether a proposed personal wireless service facility would significantly impair the views of any of the important buildings, landmarks, open spaces, or parks that were the basis for the designation of the street as a view street. Um, that is all referring to the uh, quality of street views map, which is part of the original uh, urban design element of the general plan. Uh, this map was created at the end of the 1960s and was approved by the Board of Supervisors in 1971. As far as the Public Works uh, Planning Department, the Planning Department has uh, indicated uh, there is no record that the um, basic part of San Francisco, other than downtown, this map has never been updated. It does not take into consideration any of the uh, neighborhood improvements, um, undergrounding of um, utility poles and other utilities. And so my suggestion is, is if the city of San Francisco really is interested in the quality of view streets, they should revise and update this map. It has not been updated since the 1960s, the late 1960s, when it was um, created to be reviewed by the city uh, board of supervisors and that's my suggestion. Thank you. I don't know if you can, I'm not sure if you can see this. Uh, uh, the map is uh, very small. If you'd like, I can give you a copy of this. Thank you. OK, any members that want to talk about this? Good morning, Hearing Officer Lee. Paul Walbert, and outside counsel for Verizon Wireless. We submitted some written comments, and I'll give you an extra copy. Uh, we, in, in general, um, concur that uh, the new order includes uh, much of the same language as uh, existing order 184504 with uh, needed revisions to comply with changes in federal law and the recent legislation passed by the city of San Francisco. Um, our comments have been submitted in writing and relate only to interpretation of the new shot clock for small cell facilities, and we would suggest that uh, CEQA review uh, uh, concur, be concurrent with the review of the application for the wireless facility permit, and that also that the, there be clarification regarding notices of incomplete in the period of time that the department has uh, under the shot clock following the resubmittals following a notice of incomplete. That's all in our written comments, and um, we would just want to make sure that they're on the record and that they're considered by the department in the final draft. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Nancy Starr. I reside at 2035 Laguna Street. Just to reiterate, isn't it fascinating that Verizon was well-versed in the timing and, and notification of this proposed change or this past change to the uh, Article 25? And we as citizens, the public whom you serve, were not. Is there any public want to speak on this? If there is none, I'd like the city perhaps to address some of these issues or in general. Hi, uh, Leo Palacios, Public Works. Uh, yeah, we could, uh, we feel it's good to take another week to review all comments, to possibly propose changes to our revisions. 
So I guess another week would be substantial. So then will you guys be sending out the revised uh, notifications to the public to, so that they can- Yes, we'll, we'll do the same notification sent to all the neighborhood groups, um, newspaper, I don't know if we'll have time for the newspaper ad, but we'll send definitely notice to all um, hearing attendees. So then in this case, we'll, we'll um, have this hearing again to make sure that, you know, we are okay with it. So, yes, and, uh, and anybody else before I close the meeting? Can you go up to the podium? Fran Deppendahl again from number eight, Grattan. I, I just am not clear how, are we only going to get a week notification? Uh, could we have not two or three? I believe they're gonna review within a week and then they will send out notification after that. The city themselves will review what all your concerns and stuff and trying to address them. I see, right. okay. But are they they're going to then send out after they review a week to the general Correct. public for their comments? Correct. Okay, thank you. So anything else before I close the meeting? If there are no more speakers on this item, I will now close this, uh, all this item. I'll make my recommendation to the director within five days when the director's determination is made. The department will notify the parent of it. If there are no more public comments, I'm closing this hearing. This hearing is now closed.